mechanically all these carbon atoms have to go somewhere and when you eat fat the carbons literally end up in your fat cells and when you eat glucose they literally end up in your liver and muscles and then when any of that's burned you exhale the carbon atoms and you can literally just count all the carbons and see where everything goes here's the deal with insulin right your entire body is just poised to uh, melt down every bit of tissue you have into energy and flood your bloodstream with it for emergency use so like um, glucagon is like this lead foot on the accelerator where if insulin's not there to stop it, you'll just literally have wide open lipolysis, flood your bloodstream with fatty acids, flood your bloodstream with glucose from stored glycogen. Like every tissue in your body will break down catabolism and flood your bloodstream with energy without insulin. There are norepinephrine, epinephrine, cortisol, every single one of these hormones will break down every tissue in your body flood your bloodstream with energy and you've got tons of energy. And the only thing holding that back is insulin, right? So like, look at a type one diabetic. They don't have insulin. They're melting down their entire body into energy. They're, they've got, you know, the free fatty acids in their bloodstream is off the charts. They have wide open lipolysis. They've dumped all their glycogen into glucose, ketones. Every fuel is maxed out in the bloodstream. You give them insulin and all that stops right like you're sitting there right now in a fasted state and the only reason you're the fatty acids in your bloodstream aren't off the charts is because your pancreas is constantly monitoring the fuels in your bloodstream and if the fatty acids go up a little too high insulin also goes up and tamps that back down it's like a very sensitive thermostat that's constantly mm -hmm. monitoring there's a uh, your pancreas is a fuel pressure sensor and it's monitoring the fuels in your bloodstream and keeping them down by suppressing lipolysis, right? And so what ends up happening is that, you know, your insulin is just trying to keep the fuels out of the bloodstream by keeping them in your cells. And then as you get fatter and fatter, like let's say I gain a hundred pounds, I eat a hundred pounds of butter and I gain a hundred pounds. Now all my fat cells are too full. They don't want any more fat. So the fat is just circulating in my bloodstream and my pancreas is just dumping out insulin, trying to clear it, but none of the cells want it. And then all my muscle cells are full of fat and now they don't want glucose either. And so all these fuels are really high in my bloodstream uh, and insulin gets higher and higher and higher, but none of the cells are listening to it. So I just have too much fuel in my bloodstream. So high, chronically high insulin is just a sign of energy toxicity. It just means you have way too much fuel in your bloodstream, which means you have way too much fuel in your cells and it's the whole thing backs up. And so the, the high insulin itself isn't really the problem. It's just a, a marker for the actual problem, which is energy toxicity, too many fuels in your bloodstream and then too many fuels in your cells. 